week, we've got a mouth-watering show for you. Come along with us as we tour La Tartaruga restaurant and the fish pot. Let's have a look at what's to come in the next half hour. I'm Davia Chambers, and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Tobago is giving its support to Caribbean islands affected by Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Maria. We have details on plans for waste oil management and later, Tobagonian filmmakers get set for the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival 2017. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Stay with us. Our Caribbean neighbors need our help. Support hurricane relief efforts by donating canned food, baby food and diapers, building materials like plywood, nails and tools, medical supplies, flashlights, batteries and new clothing. Drop off items to Tima at Fairfield Complex or the Signal Hill Warehouse. Financial donations are also welcome. For more info, call the 211 hotline or visit tha.gov.tt or cdema.org. First stop, Pleasant Prospect. We're at the Fish Pot, a restaurant that caters almost exclusively to seafood lovers. Now, Tobago is joining its CARICOM neighbors to help provide relief to the Caribbean islands affected by Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Maria. What can you do to help? Kearney Freitas explains in this lead story. This hurricane season has been overwhelming for some of our Caribbean neighbors. Anguilla, the British Virgin Islands, and Antigua and Barbuda were among the hardest hit by Hurricane Irma. And most recently, Hurricane Maria struck Dominica, leaving destruction in her wake. The full extent of the damage and the number of resulting deaths aren't yet known, as the island is still cut off from communications. Tobago, through the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, TEMA, has joined the national effort to bring relief to those in need. A special appeal is being made for the public to donate funds and supplies. This will help those affected meet their basic needs while they seek to rebuild their lives. It's important for us in the Caribbean to understand that we are small islands and our GDP and also our resources um, capacity is, could only go so far. This or these events have been overwhelming to those affected and therefore we are calling upon the rest of the Caribbean community to rise to the occasion to provide the necessary support. The most critically needed items include canned food, water, building materials like plywood, nails and tools, flashlights and batteries, baby food, diapers, bottles and toys, personal hygiene items, medical supplies and mattresses, bed sheets, pillows and bedspreads. It's important, very imperative that we make whatever we donate have a six-month shelf life. Clothing is very acceptable, but these clothing must be new items. They must not, and let me repeat that, they must not be used item in any way. Uh, we need to preserve the dignity of the people who have been affected, and therefore those are some of the appeals that have been made. Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles says the Assembly will assist in the collection drive. Each THA division will encourage its employees to contribute. We will then use TEMA as a coordinating agency to collect these supplies and then to assist in getting them to the effective areas. So once again, we appeal to you, ladies and gentlemen, residents of Tobago, that in this the time of need of our Caribbean brothers and sisters. Let us come forward and let us willingly assist in this their greatest time of need. You can donate your items by dropping them into Tima at Fairfield Complex or at the Disaster Relief Warehouse in Signal Hill. You can also call the 211 hotline for more information or visit cdema.org to find out how you can contribute to the Disaster Relief Fund. I'm Kuhn Defritas for Let's Talk Tobago. The fish pot was constructed nine years ago by Fiacra and Erica Vaughan. At the time, there weren't any restaurants dedicated to seafood, so the couple decided they'd provide a unique dining experience, and it did just that. 
from the table to the classroom. Instruments of appointment have been presented to members of the new Tobago Hospitality and the Tourism Institute Board. We tell you who they are in this next report. A new board of the Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute has been appointed. The board is being chaired by senior engineer at the University of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Allison Williams. He's also a former lecturer at the University of the West Indies Tobago campus. I clearly understand what education is all about and what we may need to do in Tobago to fill the gaps that may exist in this island. So it is with great pleasure that I accept the invitation of the Chief Secretary to become the chairman of this institution uh, for whatever period of time we are given. And I promise this afternoon at the inauguration of this board that we will do our best to move the institution to another level. There are eight other members on the board. Deputy Chairman Diane Whiskey John and members Dr. Levis Guy Obiako, Michael Simmons, Annalise Innes, Shirley Cook, Agnes Marie, Carlos Waldron, and Claire Brathwit Alexander. Danel Dakoto is the secretary to the board. Dr. Williams says there are many great things to come for the THTI. We must maintain the quality to ensure that we bring the level of our cadre of our staff and working persons in the tourism industry and perhaps in the broader economy of Tobago up to scratch to ensure that we capitalize on the opportunities that will be before us. The institution, which offers up to the associate degree level, will become an integrated university for Tobago. This in some way can go towards the diversification thrust of which we speak. Meaning, of course, we're going to have education as an instrument of economic diversification. And there, therein again lies one of your, um, your mandated activities, Dr. Williams. And perhaps I could let you know that we are at the stage right now where there is, in principle, an agreement with a consortium of, consortium of foreign universities um, to work with us, to partner with us as we seek to develop this institution. The board will serve for one year, 2017 to 2018. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. As you can probably guess, the name of the property was inspired by the specialized seafood menu. Customers enjoy a rich menu with lobster, crab cakes, shrimp, and a variety of fresh local fish. It's a great dining experience. Now, even though strides have been made in the health sector in recent years, there are still a number of challenges to be addressed. So health officials hosted their second community meeting in East Tobago to get the input of residents on improvements they want to see. Here's this report. The face of healthcare in Tobago is changing. In the last eight months, patients in the healthcare system have benefited from moves to improve customer service, primary healthcare, and facilities on the island. This approach has factored in the needs of clients in communities across Tobago. So officials of the Tobago Regional Health Authority, TRHA, and the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development have been visiting communities. Most recently, they stopped in to Charlotteville to share information with residents. Residents listed their concerns and suggestions to improve healthcare delivery, and they were encouraged to take an active role in maintaining their wellness. For the Tobago population, we require you to live a healthier life. We require that because that's important for us. We want a healthy population, a productive population. We, at the present time, we are managing sickness. I, I earlier said that um, many persons are presenting with strokes. We have an average of 11 per month. That is a, a whole lot of persons at hospital. It means to say, or primary care is deficient, or health and wellness trust needs to, to be looked at. Among the issues raised were improvements to health facilities in Charlottesville and Roxborough, the ambulance service, opening times for health centers, and the proposed construction of a Charlottesville walk-in clinic. 
This walk-in clinic plan was for Speyside, Charlottesville, Lansumi. And then they kind of turn it to NEMA Immigration and Custom. We don't want that. This is a matter that has engaged our attention for the past months. We are trying to have this matter resolved because we know this is, we are, we are trying to revert to the original plan. In terms of the extended hours, we have to look at that again because it will mean we have to have additional resources to extend the hours beyond 4 p.m. Officials were also told that there are currently no blood technicians or phlebotomists in Charlottesville. We do have at least 10 phlebotomists working with the authority and the issue of rotating them throughout the various health facilities to improve or enhance our service will receive uh, consideration. The meeting took place at the Charlottesville Health Center. It's one of a three-part series in East Tobago. The first meeting was held at the Betsy's Hope Louis Dore Multipurpose Facility on August 17th. I'm Kuhn DeFreitas for Let's Talk Tobago. We have to take a break, but coming up next, details on Tobago's waste oil management system. Stay with us. Let's Talk Tobago. We'll be right back. The Fishpot restaurant sits on one acre of land. Its four staff members are passionate about ensuring you have a great meal and a great time. They even create a relaxing ambience with live entertainment on request. Now we all want an environment that's clean, green, safe and serene. But when your car gets a tune-up, where does the used oil go? In this next report, Omodara Mills tells you about a new system that's going to make a big difference to environmental sustainability. Have a look. Tobago produces close to four barrels or 1,000 liters of waste oil per day. This is the lubricating oil used in cars. It's considered waste when it becomes contaminated and is no longer effective. 85% of that waste oil is discarded at Study Park. It's hazardous and harmful to the environment. So the THA is working with the Basel Convention Regional Center, an organization that manages the proper disposal of hazardous waste, to construct a waste oil processing plant at the Cove Eco-Industrial and Business Park. So in order to offer our public utilities, our transport sector, our construction and power sector an opportunity to properly manage their waste oil, as well as the local mechanics, a way to properly manage their waste oil rather than throwing it into your rivers and streams, which would even to be, uh, end up in our oceans. We'd like to develop this plant to be able to help manage it so that we can then also be able to gain some revenue from it as well. Representatives from the center held workshops and meetings with stakeholders. They also completed a waste oil study for the island. They are advocating for the construction of an atomic vacuum demonstration plant for the processing and re-refining of waste oil. Currently, our project was originally a two-year project. We are now in the phase of, the, of assessing and identifying which technology um, is right for Tobago. So we hoped within the next year that we would have the solution up and running so that we can start training for the plant. This type of plant can process a variety of oils. It has a 95% yield and can be upgraded to meet higher production levels. This eco-friendly project should also create other business opportunities for Tobagonians. The health of the, our environment and of our citizens is, is paramount to the Department of Natural Resources and the Environment and to the THA by extension. So also if we want to be promoting a tourism economy, we also need to ensure that we have a green economy by promoting these kind of initiatives for the island which would promote us well on the international market as well. The project is being financed by the Green Fund. The Basel Convention Regional Center will set up the plant and facilitate training. When it is fully operational, the plant will then be transferred to the THA. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. 
Next stop, Buku. The La Tartaruga Italian restaurant is owned by Gabriel de Gaetano and his daughter, Francesca. Now, the concept was inspired by Gabriel's wife, Andrea, and her passion for travel and good cuisine. And creating good cuisine requires quality food. The agricultural sector in Tobago is expanding the possibilities of food production for Tobago through the Kendall Farm School. More than 40 students have joined the 2017 cohort. They are focused on adding value to the agricultural sector. Here are the details. Planting crops like corn is the easy part. Then there's cultivation and care to ensure they grow and thrive. But what happens after the harvest? Students of the Youth Apprentice Program for Agriculture, or YAPA, learned about post-harvest handling of corn and its value chain development at a recent workshop. They were joined by agro-processors, housewives, and anyone else seeking to find out more about the many ways of preparing the crops we consume daily. A value chain is a series of activities that adds value to a product. The product is prepared for market and typically connected to retailers or consumers. The students would have been involved, first of all, with the planting of corn. We did started at, on Corpus Christi, which is a tradition for Tobago. We planted corn and we made our harvest for the training last week. What we are looking at with value chain development is moving the product from the crude, fresh form into states that would extend the shelf life and the useful life of it, and of course the economic value. The hope is that participants learn key agriculture theories. They also learn that they can make a real difference to Tobago's economy by generating income. We would have looked at fresh corn, looking at boiled corn, and we would have done a couple of products um, expressing how the corn could be preserved and you um, kept for future use. We hosted another leg of that um, um, value chain development. This leg now we focused on livestock um, nutrition and we moved our corn stovers or stock to a product that we call silage, which is in silent in an anaerobic environment. And that after 14 to 21 days, it will be cured and the product could last 10, 15, 20 years. The students say whilst they already knew a lot about corn, the workshop was quite beneficial. We learned how to package corn. We also learned the difference between boil and roast corn. Also, different techniques in how we'll manage the corn. For, um, also, we learned the different um, variety, what you can use corn to do. I learned about silage. You can use the husk from the corn to make silage for your animals. This was one of several workshops hosted by the Department of Agriculture's Kendall Farm School. The workshops are free of charge. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. The seafood at Fishpot is reeled in by local fishermen hours before being served. There's an emphasis on ensuring the food is sourced in a way that's ethical, safe and sustainable. Now we take a closer look at Tobago's rainforest as efforts are being made to improve protected areas in Trinidad and Tobago. It's starting with a new environmental project at a few key sites, including the Main Ridge Forest Reserve. Here are the details. Tobago's Main Ridge Forest Reserve is the oldest protected rainforest in the Western Hemisphere. It's an important part of the island's ecosystem. This is why the reserve was one of six locations in the country selected for a pilot project under the Improving Forests and Protected Areas in Trinidad and Tobago, IFPAM program. In the Tobago context, we have the CEDP and we have CEDP upgraded or updated. And it, 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 one of the development pillars of that document is this whole um, movement towards improving management of forests and protected areas. So it's fit very nicely into the context for development that Tobago speaks to. The THA is responsible for the setting up of a trust. Now this body will consist of representatives from different sectors. They will implement the necessary plans, ensure that the jobs created are sustainable for the areas, and monitor the activities so that they don't negatively impact or affect the natural environment. The THA is now working with us to implement something called the um, Northeast Tobago Management Trust, 
which is, which is an initiative to improve how that area is managed, to be able to um, market the area as a product and a product of quality. So we need to invest in it properly. And we're setting up a management regime that will allow us to develop the quality product to be marketed. So far, the facilitators have had consultations with over 20 NGOs, CBOs, THA departments, and business owners. These meetings allow the facilitators and the assembly to come up with sustainable management strategies for the protected areas. In turn, this will help to improve the lives of all who live on the island. The quality of the coastal waters are impacted by what takes place on land in terms of whether we have uh, sustainable practices. So generally, uh, managing the terrestrial ecosystem is important also to the coastal zone and in particular to the livelihoods that are derived from these areas. If PAM is a four-year program, it's now in its second year. It's expected that even when the program has ended, the projects will grow into viable activities that will benefit residents and the protected areas. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up next, Tobago films to be screened at the Trinidad and the Tobago Film Festival. Don't go anywhere. Let's Talk Tobago. We'll be right back. Our Caribbean neighbors need our help. Support hurricane relief efforts by donating canned food, baby food and diapers, building materials like plywood, nails and tools, medical supplies, flashlights, batteries and new clothing. Drop off items to Tima at Fairfield Complex or the Signal Hill Warehouse. Financial donations are also welcome. For more info, call the 211 hotline or visit tha.gov.tt or cdema.org. It's an Italian restaurant, but with an unmistakable Caribbean theme. The restaurant is adorned by Caribbean decorations, colorful local artwork, and the Trinidadian wood antiques. The Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival is an avenue for filmmakers in the region and beyond to showcase their talents. This year, you can expect to see a few films emerging from Tobago at the festival. We have all the details in this report. Have a look. The Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival brings the creative storytelling of this country's filmmakers to the local audience. It's also a chance for up-and-coming talent in front and behind the camera to explore their craft. The festival was founded in 2006 with film screenings in both islands. It's also an outlet for Caribbean filmmakers who live abroad. Tobago has a number of entries in this year's festival. For example, Centre Stitch created by the Beacon Initiative Group. This short film was directed by 16-year-old Siloy Carr. It addresses social issues affecting schools, including bullying and unprotected sex. The film came about from the Secondary Schools Film Festival. Um, after working with the children in that year, I said, okay, fine, we need to not just do films for the festival, let's do films for itself, purpose itself, addressing various social issues. So I formed the group Beacon Initiative because they call Concrete Lighthouse on the Hill, the Beacon on the Hill. So I use one of the names of the school in the name of the film. Quick Pick, directed by Miguel K. Lashley, is a feature film about a young man who's always unlucky. Executive producer Brent Hoyt says he enjoyed making the movie. On set, it was uh, a mixture of moods, exciting, dramatic, a lot of falling out, but it was a good experience. We didn't have a budget to work on, so basically stuff was paid out of pocket, and uh, we had a lot of changes uh, due to location and person. Omadara Mills is also excited to see her work hit the big screen. She directed the documentary, Wetlands and Us. She revealed the most challenging aspect of life behind the scenes. I would say the challenging bits were that it was long, even in terms of logging shots. And so I remember one night staying up until about 2 o'clock logging shots um, because I wanted it to be done in a particular way. And I also wanted to meet the deadline. The Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival runs from September 19th to September 26th. 
You can visit ttfilmfestival.com to find out more about screening times for this year's entries. I'm Kern De Freitas for Let's Talk to Bigo. La Tartaruga was awarded the Wine Spectator Award of Excellence for 15 consecutive years. It's got an impressive wine cellar and wine program. But that's not all. The restaurant has received TripAdvisor Certificate of Excellence and the 2017 Jamaica Observer Table Talk Food Award among several accolades. Now there's a popular saying that charity begins at home and one school is getting a musical boost from some enthusiastic past students. It's all in this next report. Former Bishop's High School students are giving back. A list of musical instruments were donated to the school by the class of 1974. They included stage curtains, stage lights, a keyboard, a rhythm guitar, an electric guitar, a trap set, microphones, and two bass guitars. The class believes that music improves academic, physical, and social skills and refines your discipline. All of you will be in a different plane because you have to start today. So I want you to cherish it. I want you to recognize it. I want you to buy into it. I want you to be conscious that music helps in your studies and follow the music teacher. One teacher says the instruments will strengthen the school's musical program. I want to assure the class of 74 and ultrasonics that these gifts of instruments and equipment, of course, will enhance our music program here at the school and will positively impact on all our students and the community. Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles, who was a member of the class of 1974, encouraged the students to transform Tobago's education system. I have said that the Tobago of the future, we have to build it together. So I say together we build. I also give Tobago the word metanoia, which really means a transformation of the mind. And it speaks to a new beginning. So that you here at Bishops from today henceforth represents in a real sense a new beginning. Yeah. I'm Keisha Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. Now it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear your thoughts on issues affecting Tobago. Today we are asking, do you think events like the recent beach cleanup are important? Why? While you think about it, we'll have a look at who had their say. Beach cleanup are important to keep our environment clean. It is important because our beaches are where tourists come. A beach must always be beautiful. Yes, um, very important. Um, we've been having a lot of debris and internationally a lot of discussion in terms of plastics on the sea fronts and the ocean it actually is collecting in, in clusters now in the ocean and the ocean floor so it's a matter of serious concern for us yes why because to keep the environment clean it's good that it keeps it clean to like for the better of the animals and and the nature to make it look better as well we always polluting on the beach we leave bottles we leave cans paper and it kills the uh, marines because you get back into the ocean and you know it's devastating. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the International Coastal Cleanup 2017.